We're about to send the colorful metaphors out of some Star Trek, but believe it or not, we at CinemaSins actually love Star Trek. So much so that we made a new CinemaSins podcast called Captain's Pod. A show where the CinemaSins crew can review, sin, and talk about everything Star Trek. So whether you're new to Star Trek, a lifelong Trekkie, or anything in between, join us on the USS Enterprise by searching for Captain's Pod or CinemaSins in your podcast player of choice. Until then, enjoy the video and live, live long, long and prosper. Spock getting to direct a Trek film before Kirk really was the final nail in the coffin of their friendship, so I'm told. But Nimoy did a great job with three and then hit it out of the park with four, whereas Shatner directed the only Trek film more boring than the motion picture. <laughs> hmm, something not quite right here. That's better. It appears to be a probe, Captain. How the f*** would you know that? Because it's broadcasting or making noise? Because it's simplistic in design? In just two movies, this fellow becomes the head of Starfleet. What is this graphic even telling us? There are no measurements for length, mass, or speed. All it seems to tell us is what the probe would look like if it was rendered on an Atari 2600. Here's a video that purports to show the insides of the Enterprise right before Kirk blew it up at the end of Search for Spock. And a view of the explosion from outside the ship. But where is camera, Starfleet? Where is camera? This is clearly just movie footage being used to save money, and I am okay with that, but I will in it. Also, previously on Star Trek. And the result of this awesome energy was euphemistically called the Genesis Planet, a secret base from which to launch the annihilation of the Klingon people. See, kids, people making wild political conspiracy theories about naturally occurring events has been going on for decades. Also, how is the Genesis Planet a better strike point against the Klingons than the dead moon it was before? Can Starfleet not use bases and satellites and starships and essentially base on SETI Alpha 5 with or without active climate and vegetation? We know further outbursts from the floor. Good luck enforcing that! They all appear to have alcoholic drinks, man. And don't tell me the entire body of this Senate came in thirsty and just ordered water. Mr. President, I've come to speak on behalf of the accused. Considering how shocked the crowd was by this entrance, it appears Sarek wasn't even in this room, which means he was either late or they started the proceedings early. What kind of hearing starts before the defense has even turned up? The council's deliberations are over. The f***? You finish without hearing the side of the accused? There shall be no peace. As long as Kirk lives. But that does lead to the undiscovered country, so f*** you, dude. Captain's log, stardate 8390. Stardates, man. How do they work? Obviously painted Klingon bird of prey is obviously painted. Wizard of Oz did a better job with the painted backgrounds. I know it's fairly unbelievable, but thank Murdoch that Chekhov brought a change of outfit during all the mutineering. You'd think they could at least send a ship. Damn it, Jim. McCoy would be excellent at cinema sins. Also, why can't the Vulcans take them back to Earth? Sarek was on Vulcan at the end of the last movie and seems to have made the trip at least once. Oh, I just wish we could cloak the stench. That's racist. Thankfully, just in case a Vulcan ever died but was then resurrected months later because of a science experiment to rapidly grow life on planets, they have a ritual for that. No one will be seated during the scene where Spock proves he is obnoxiously smart. How do you feel? Look, I'm not even half Vulcan and I would not only hesitate if a computer asked me this question, I might even wig the f*** out. Spock's mom has some really good things to... It's impacting on all our systems. Yellow alert. Shields up. The ship is faced with a totally alien probe without clear intent, and they weren't at least at yellow alert already? Emergency lights. Shouldn't the emergency lights come on automatically in, oh, I don't know, an emergency? Wait, didn't you get blown up two movies ago? Kirk is getting a full report of all the ship repairs, but everyone omits that someone decided to redecorate the entire damn bridge since we last saw it. Onboard computer will interface with Federation memory bag. Wait, really? That's f***ing amazing. Holy sh**. Do you not even want to know why? Doesn't this mean the Klingons were dangerously close to mimicking Federation computer could Why am I the only one concerned about it, this? I have replaced the Klingon food packs. They were giving me a sour stomach. Okay, first of all, why were you eating the Klingon food packs in the first place? Second, you replaced them only after you got a sour stomach? So all the first aboard folks were just eating Klingon sh until you, precious you, got sick? Third, what did you replace the Klingon food packs with? I assume Federation food packs, no? Maybe Vulcan food packs. My question is, if they were so nearby and handy, why did you ever even take a single bite of a Klingon food pack? May your journey be free of incident. Live long and prosper, Lieutenant. That's a weird way of saying, hey, remember when I was a teenager and we banged? Him, back at his post like nothing happened. I don't know if you've got the whole picture or not, but he's not exactly working on all thrusters. Listen, I may just let McCoy take the rest of this script. I am not needed here. Watch all vessels. Watch all vessels. 
This is the tardiest command ever. Literally, as the space dock is getting shut down by the probe, they call out for vessels to launch. Late! This is Leia yelling evacuate after the Death Star fired on Alderaan. The Excelsior is still in space dock. Is this the only ship in Starfleet that doesn't go to the stars? We have lost all internal power. Well, maybe you've lost all main power, but the screens behind you are powered by something, right? And the lights? You have some power, just not all power. Let's be specific, Junior. This is f***ing Starfleet. Uhura, what's on the comm channels? Very active, sir. Multiphasic transmissions overlapping. And you're only telling him this now? What if he hadn't asked? Once again, Earth has, for some reason, been left entirely defenseless. Shouldn't at least 10% of Starfleet be held back for planetary defenses? We haven't seen a single thing open fire on the probe. Even pot shots from a distance. Holy sh**, this probe has caused a hurricane! If the probe is only looking for communication with humpback whales, why does it open with hurricane-level destruction? Why was the probe designed to look for whales, but destroy the planet if no whales were found? We cannot survive unless a way can be found to respond to the probe. You don't know that! You're making a huge assumption that responding to the probe will even make a difference. Hi, I'm Bones, and I'm totally wasted by this film. Evidently unaware that its transmissions are destructive. How the hell could you possibly discern that? Can you modify the probe's signals, accounting for density, and temperature, and salinity factors? Somehow, that the probe's focused on the oceans and millions of smart minds on Earth, only Kirk, out in deep space, thinks to run the probe's audio through various filters? Only Kirk? If my suspicion is correct, there can be no response to this message. Excuse me. Planet Earth is on the edge of destruction, but Spock would rather leave everyone in suspense than clue them in to his theory because... DRAMA! Humpbacks were heavily hunted by man. They've been extinct since the 21st century. Ah ha! This movie assumes there are no humpback whales in the future because their numbers were so low in the late 80s, but in 2022, there are over 130,000 humpback whales and they are no longer considered in danger, so f*** you, movie, for getting the future wrong. Does the species exist on any other planet? Did Kirk just ask if a species that went extinct in the 21st century somehow evolved simultaneously on another f***ing planet? Start your computations for time warp. The Star Trek time warp has got to be one of the biggest buried leads in pop culture history. Apparently time travel is as easy as flying around the sun super fast, and yet they never use it. Why doesn't Kirk use it to save his son, or prevent Khan altogether? And don't give me that preserving the timeline BS, because I've seen this movie, and I know Kirk in particular couldn't give a f about preserving sh**. The storm outside is so powerful, I think these windows might break. Let's put a sticky suction cup thing on the inside, one part of it. Brilliant! You're proposing that we go backwards in time, find humpback whales, then bring them forward in time, drop them off, and hope to hell they tell this probe what to go do with itself. Well, when you say it all out loud, it sounds kind of stupid. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. It's not a Star Trek movie if someone doesn't quote Shakespeare. That seems incredibly serious, and yet it is not. Also, Uhura survives this. According to this movie, time travel means shape-shifting cloud heads that look like your friends. We are probably already visible to the tracking devices of the time. Then why didn't they set the cloak to automatically come on once they'd finished time warping? You guys have been here seconds, and the timeline is already f No one who watches the sky for a living sees this sh Admiral, I am receiving whale song. Really? Receiving? You're hearing it, maybe, if you have your instruments tuned as such, but they're not sending it to you directly. At best, you're intercepting, to be honest. Eavesdropper. Admiral. We have a serious problem. Would you please come down? You better come take a look at this cliche. It's these Klingon crystals, Admiral. The time travel drained them. This is so unfortunate and something we never could have seen coming, even though time travel has happened several times in our adventures. MacGuffin is MacGuffin. We won't have enough to break out of Earth's gravity to say nothing about getting home. Shouldn't the fact that the ship only had enough juice to get them there be something that immediately came up in Spock's calculations? I mean, there's no point traveling back in time to get a whale that you have no way of bringing back to the future. Also, they really didn't need to take the Klingon ship at all, did they? They could have taken as long as they wanted to find a better ship, because guess what? Time travel! It doesn't look all that different. Yes, it f***ing does! Set us down in Golden Gate Park. F***ing what? The internet tells me that 24 million people visit Golden Gate Park annually. Let's say in 84 it was half that. Even then, that's over 30,000 people per day, any one of which is going to be extremely confused by the addition of the invisible wall they just jogged into. Those of you in uniform, remove your rank insignia. Right, because those insignias will mean a bunch to these primitive paranoid 80s humans anyway. Did you see that? No, and neither did you. Fortunately for the timeline, these two men spontaneously agree to never speak of this again. Also, Uhura can apparently detect the location of whales from miles away, but not these two men that Sulu nearly landed on. We're still using money, we gotta find some. It is odd we are still using money, but once you understand the American oligarchy, it makes more sense. I'll give you $100. Is that a lot? Here's the problem with trying to fund your time travel trip to the past. You have no idea what costs what. 
Also, I'd give all the sins back if this cut to a scene of all the Enterprise crew shoved into storage lockers at the train station like in Muppets Take Manhattan and Spock did Janice's line of, I'll trade with anyone that has a jacuzzi. This is the first of several folks who live here that somehow cannot or will not give Chekhov and Uhura directions to the naval base at Alameda. Nobody pays any attention to you unless you swear every other word. That is fucking not true, goddammit. Wait. The Cetacean Institute is the only museum in the world exclusively devoted to whales. Let's just go ahead and send SeaWorld and all marine parks for keeping creatures that like to roam for hundreds of miles captive in a space smaller than an NFL playing field. I love how the Whale Museum tour opens with horrific video of whales being slaughtered. <laughs> really sets the mood. Look how grossed out these ladies are, for fuck's sake. Today there are less than 10,000 specimens alive. Wait, there are 10,000 of these fuckers out there and Kirk and Spock get fixated on a very specific two of them? The hell? Uhura heard whale song from space! They couldn't ping the globe to find two wild whales to beam up. This entire subplot is a lie! Here, gaze on the whales that cannot move enough to not be visible to you from this spot. I want you guys out of here right now, or I call the cops. Instead of leaving, Kirk and Spock will continue to try and explain themselves. And why, I ask? You got the information you need, you found whales, now get out of there! It's not like you're actually gonna get her to understand what the hell Spock was doing with her whale! Golden Gate Bridge! Admiral. We have found the nuclear vessel. Again, Uhura could scan for the whales, but couldn't scan for a damn nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Why did they have to physically see that shit before they were able to transport into it? There she is. From the Institute. If we play our cards right, we may be able to find out when those whales are leaving. My goodness, this is some extremely convenient BS. If they need to know when the whales are being released, why didn't they hang around at the Cetacean Center until they caught Jillian instead of relying on this total fluke of an interaction? What's going to happen when you release the whales? How the could she know this? No one knows this. This isn't even a very long movie, but it is wasting so much time. We may be able to help you in ways that, frankly, you couldn't possibly imagine. FYI, no successful threesome ever started out with this phrase, at least according to my research. I explained that you'd come all the way here from Edinburgh on appointment to study methods of manufacturing by Plexicorp, but they don't seem to know anything about it. This works. Also, I'm amazed McCoy thinks he can just invent place names and get away with it. Edinburgh, indeed. Good looking ship. Huey 204, isn't it? Right on. I flew something similar back in my academy days. The color of metal where you did. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. I am legit surprised they even still teach typing in the 23rd century. Why would they? Everything would be voice activated, if not thought reading sh**. Who would still know how to type besides Stephen King? But also, he's not hitting anywhere near enough keys to bring up a program that can handle his advanced ass f***ing math with graphics. Timeline be damned, Scotty trades material knowledge from the 23rd century in exchange for the materials to build the tank for the whales. At some point, you just have to wonder if your efforts to save the future are actually guaranteeing said future is totally different from the one you left behind. The hell did she drive onto the grass for? Holy sh**! You couldn't have waited until the damn car was out of sight before transporting? Large mushroom pepperoni with extra onions and a Michelob, please. Holy sh**! She just ordered a disgusting pizza and product placement in the same breath! Great choice. And you, sir? Jesus f***ing Christ, she just ordered a large pizza! Does the waiter think that- Like that, too. Holy f He did order a second large pizza for the super small table! What the f*** is happening right now? You're upset about losing the whales, aren't you? You're very perceptive. Is he? On the tour earlier, you basically said, I love these whales as my children, while wearing a Whales or People 2 t-shirt. He's no more perceptive than a camera. If you're in a restaurant and they have a jar with unwrapped crispy breadsticks sitting out in the open air on your table like it's a container of goddamn salt, never eat those breadsticks. Do you realize how many COVIDs are on those things? I could take those whales somewhere where they'd never be hunted. Why is Kirk telling her this? Why does he need her help at all? Just beam those suckers up! Is it? I thought I told you never to call me. Would it really have been so hard to excuse yourself and take the call somewhere like, well, anywhere other than right in front of an already suspicious local? Don't tell me. You're from outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. Semantics. They get up to go, and the waiter walks up with one small metal tray and a bill. He even says who gets the bad news, and we get the joke about Kirk having no money because he's from the future, but they ordered two large pizzas! What the fuck is this highway robbery? I was expecting two huge-ass disgustingly top pizzas to show up, and then them having to figure out who gets to sit on the table and who had to hold theirs in their lap. And if you try and tell me she only ordered by the slice, I will slice you in half with my razor-sharp anger, because you don't order with sizes when pizza places are by the slice. You order by the number of slow. Go f*** yourself. George and Gracie's transmitter. What's the radio frequency? Sorry, that's classified. Secret, maybe, but classified? That's a government term. Nothing about any whale is classified. If I have to, I'll go to the open seat again. Ash, you should have done in the first place. Instead, this movie had to have a love interest and sneak in a Michelob reference, so we got this storyline. 
Ecologically friendly science knowing whale lady continues her personal assault on municipally owned grass. We apparently are getting a power drain. I mean, it must be coming from inside the ship. How would you know that? Scotty, we're ready for beam out. Sadly, there are communications issues right now that are directly impacting the plot laddie. Wearing leather pants. Commander Pavel Chekhov, Starfleet, United Federation of Planets. They removed their rank insignias, but not their f***ing Starfleet IDs? I am Pavel Chekhov, a commander in Starfleet, United Federation of Planets. Service number 656-58270. Did Chekhov just not get the memo about how they are in the past now and can't talk too much about the future, or what? This is a humorous scene, but Chekhov is not this dumb. Stop making Chekhov dumb! Of course he's a rusky, but he's a or something. Yikes! People act like Trek selling NFTs in 2022 is the first time the brand ever stepped outside its core values, but I say look at this shit right here, yo! Inclusivity for all, except Ruskies and that other word. You promised me an estimate on the dilithium crystals. It's going slowly, sir. It'll be well into tomorrow. That's not good enough, Mr. Scott. You've got to do better. Yes, because I'm sure the recrystallization of dilithium crystals is going slowly purely because Scotty just isn't trying hard enough. Okay, so the shock reveal here is that the whales are already gone by early morning instead of at noon, as they previously said. Shock! But the biggest shock is that they expect us to believe they could drain a tank that large in just a few hours. Anyone who ever rented or owned a home with a swimming pool knows it can take days to drain even small-looking amounts of water. You sent them away without even letting me say goodbye Jillian. to them! Somehow the news that George and Gracie have already been taken away is enough to convince Jillian that Kirk is telling the truth about being from the future. Because I have the faintest idea why else she would head back to Kirk unless she believed he had the capacity to help her. Look at the busted-ass peeling seat in that truck. Does this whale job pay in crackers or what? On a beautiful morning in Golden Gate Park, only the recently despondent whale scientist is here to witness this bizarre sight caused by the cloaking device. I know we've Dumbledore the polarity of the discount flux capacitor, but did you really need to waste energy on beaming her in? At this point, you may as well just open the damn door. We must help Chekhov. Is that the logical thing to do, Spock? No. But it is the human thing to do. But also, very much the logical thing to do. Pretty sure leaving Chekhov, dead or alive, in the 23rd century is not a smart idea. Also, this Spock is an emotionless bastard routine just feels like a wishy-washy attempt to acknowledge that this is a new Spock that is still discovering who he is. Considering the progress he's already made and the fact that it is all but forgotten in the following movies, I really have to wonder why they even bothered to address it at all. Will you help us? How? Well, we're gonna have to look like physicians. But she's a whale scientist. How's she supposed to help you? Well, I'll be damned. Dealing with medievalism here. <laughs> the whale lady just handed the future doctor the exact right tool for the job without being prompted. <laughs> yeah, I love this movie, but it is dumb as f***. How's the patient, doctor? He's gonna make it. He, he came in with a sheet. The officers tasked with making sure a suspected Russian spy isn't stolen both choose to check on the empty room instead of following the people escaping with an entirely unhidden suspected Russian spy. Although that is completely f***ing moot, because there is no reason why they couldn't have just transported from the damn operating theater. This movie makes it canon that a transporter beam intended for one person can actually transport two people if one person jumps into the other's arms at the last second and that is hella stupid! Also, also, talk about a Klingon, am I right? I'll leave. This man was in a coma mere minutes ago. Acceleration is no longer a constant. Yes. Spock. Guessing is not in my nature, Doctor. Look, there was no f***ing way that this movie was going to end with them getting the whales, but then failing to get back to the future because Spock's guess ended up being wrong. So quit bullshitting us with this weak sauce attempt at building tension and show us the Enterprise A. For maximum drama's sake, there is already a whaling ship about to hone in on and kill George and Gracie. That's cherry-picking even Ovechkin would be impressed by. Yes, that's a hockey joke, but if you know hockey, it's a really f***ing good one. Behold, one of the most bonkers yet badass images in the history of Star Trek. I want to screenshot it, put it on a canvas, and mount it in my bedroom. You know, it's ironic. When man was killing these creatures, he was destroying his own future. Nothing like having the movie's underlying message figuratively spoon-fed to us by the lead protagonist. Ground cushion. Keep the nose up if you can. He just said he had no controls. I have no controls, sir. They just sully Sullenberger to Klingon bird of prey in the fog during a storm with no controls and a huge bridge in their way. We interrupt your Star Trek movie to bring you two minutes and 25 seconds of whale song. I know Spock communicated their intentions to George and Gracie, but I still find it hard to believe that they didn't respond to the probe by saying, these bastards killed us all. Feel free to fuck them up at your discretion. Dude, don't look right now, but at your three o'clock, Jerry's wearing that wrestling rapper Hari Krishna outfit again. Because of certain mitigating circumstances, all charges but one are summarily dismissed. James T. Kirk, it is the judgment of this council 
let you be reduced in rank to captain. It is amazing what you can get away with as long as the good shit you do comes after all the bad shit you did. We all want to see Kirk back on the bridge, but damn it, this is the laziest way to get him there. It's not like this is the first time they've saved the world or even the galaxy. So do those times not mean shit just because they were years prior? You're going to your ship, I'm going to mine. Science vessel. The biggest sin in the entire film is that they not only take this 1980s Earth woman into the future with them just because Kirk kissed her, but that they then assign her immediately to a science officer position on a starship. Like, does Starfleet Academy not exist? Or do old Earth experience credits transfer directly in this case? She will be worthless on a starship as a science officer. And she won't be near her f buddy Kirk. Wouldn't she be better off as an expert overseeing George and Gracie's new life in 83, 90? We'll get a freighter. With all respect, Doctor. I'm counting on Excelsior. Here the crew is on their way to their new ship, even though they have not yet been told what that ship is, because that's how that shit works. It would be impossible to discuss the subject without a common frame of reference. You mean I have to die to discuss your insights on death? I find it illogical that its intention should be hostile. You think this is its way of saying hi there to the people of the Earth? Why don't you stay here? No way. Somebody's got to keep an eye on him. The probe's transmissions are the songs sung by whales. That's crazy. Who would send a probe hundreds of light years to talk to a whale? Start your computations for time warp. You're proposing that we go backwards in time, find humpback whales, then bring them forward in time, drop them off, and hope to hell they tell this probe what to go do with this cell. You're really gonna try time travel in this rust bucket? Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. Realize, of course, if we give him the formula, we're altering the future. A simple evacuation of the expanding epidural hematoma will relieve the pressure. My God, man, drilling holes in his head's not the answer. The artery must be repaired. That was a hell of a thing. Why do you like them so much? Because they stand on a wall. We need uh, Dory. To find what are you doing? What are you doing? Can you modify the probe signals accounting for density and temperature and salinity factors? I can try, sir. I think I have it, sir. We need uh, Dory. To Start your computations for time warp. It's just a jump to the left. Did you hear a foghorn? No. Scratch the golden gate. And you programmed all that from memory? My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious sh Admiral, I am receiving whale song. Put them on speakers. We need... The time travel drained them. Well, they're giving out. Decrystallizing. Give me a round figure, Mr. Scott. 1.21 gigawatts! San Francisco. Which, of course, in German means a whale's vagina. It's been a long road. About those colorful metaphors that we've discussed, I don't think you should try using them anymore. Chill out, dickwad. We apparently are getting a power drain. I mean, it must be coming from inside the ship. Hmm. Nobody's perfect. Why don't you get this nice camp? It's clever, just like you.